Here we have an FR8X. It is used. It's about a year old. It's in great condition. Every button has been tested and ready to go. And it has also been updated to the latest, greatest version of version 2.0. And so I'm going to quickly go through some of the things that it can do now that it couldn't do before. So the first thing we have is you can put the drum set all over the free bass core button. So here I have drum set everywhere. All the MIDI drum sounds are there. And then also what you can do is you can put, you can place them so that they uh, are controlled by the bellows instead of the dynamic finger touch, which it used to be. So now notice that's the same volume, no matter how, to, how hard I push, but I can control it with the bellows. It's a pretty neat option. You can also add three drum sounds to each one. There's a lot more linking you can do. Uh, you can link three different drum sounds to the bass buttons if you need to. Um, it's pretty wonderful the way it's working out. Um, the other thing you can do is you can uh, link a whole bunch of things like I was saying. So you can link a Wave MP3 file to a user program now and save the volume so that when you're playing your MP3, the, uh, it goes with your user program and it goes with the right file and it's the volume that you saved it at. Um, there's also a shortcut. A lot of things are displayed on the screen now too, as the volume wave MP3 is on the main screen, and there's even a shortcut to get there to change it. And anything that I'm saying here, you can go onto Roland's website and find a, a extensive video of how to's on how to do this. I just want to explain some of the things it can do. Uh, the other things that can be saved now are scale tuning can be saved to a user program, also displayed on the main screen. The transpose and Sordina are also on the main display, and the transpose can be saved to a user program so that it's always the same. Some of the orchestra chords, uh, some of the orchestra sounds, excuse me, can be changed to poly or mono and use portamento. So something like this can be done. Uh, that's pretty neat. That can also be done in the left hand uh, with orchestra sounds only. Uh, it's supposed to make it sound a little bit more realistic. So I used it with a synthesizer, but you could also use it for a clarinet or trombone or something. Um, a new bellows feature, which is which is very nice, if we go back, is minimum bellows. Uh, so instead of it being either fixed or bellows controlled completely, you can set it so that there's always some sound, even if I don't move the bellows, but it's still controlled by the bellows. So now I've noticed I've stopped the bells, and I have that set to a specific amount so you can go from 1 to 50. It's really wonderful. Um, so now you will never not be making any sound if you so choose, and you can also keep it higher or lower depending on your style of play. Uh, there's also a new voicing feature in the uh, orchestra chord section. If you'll notice that I'm hitting the same button numerous times, but the voicing is changing. So that's kind of an added feature too. So now you can play some Strauss type waltzes and the inversion will change, which it just gives it a greater variety of, of what you can what you can do with it. There's there's three choices of cycles you can do, or you can just set it to new inversion. So you have a whole new whole new worlds with your with your left hand chords. Uh, another great thing is that the recorded loops can be saved and linked to a user program. There's a lot more stuff that's in here. There's a lot of copy features. There's a lot of uh, great new loop things that are going on. So if you want to refer to uh, Roland for all the how-tos and extra bits that I didn't go over here, please do. But otherwise, this instrument specifically is a used one, and it's a fantastic instrument.